as we continue discussing ways to quantitatively describe a set of data, let's look next at some measures of the variation of the data. Uh, we have different options for how to describe the variation. The simplest one is probably the range, and you, you simply take the smallest value and the largest value in the data set and find the difference between them, and this gives you the range. Uh, one disadvantage of this is that it's easily influenced by outliers. So if you have all of your data kind of gathered around a mean, and then you have one outlier so that the data set is really skewed, uh, this would make it look like you have a really big range of values, when in reality maybe most of your data is, is pretty close together, and you just have a single number that's, that's way off. Um, because of that, another way to describe variation is the five number summary, and this is a little bit more accurate and gives us more information if there is an outlier involved. Um, a third option is to use standard deviation, which is just a single number, to describe variation. And this is nice if you just want to be concise and have a single number rather than five numbers or rather than a, a box plot um, visual display of the variation. So let's take a look at the five number summary and then we'll look at standard deviation next. Okay, so for this data set, you can see we do have an outlier. The number one is, is much lower than the rest of the data. So let's go through and calculate um, the five numbers. So we know that the lowest value is one. We know that the highest value is 13. And then we need the median of the data set. So this one has, this set has uh, six numbers. So the median would be halfway between the third and fourth numbers. And since they're the same, the median is just 10. All right, and then we have um, the first quartile and the third quartile or you can also call these the lower quartile and the upper quartile, and these are just the medians of the lower half of the data and the upper half of the data. All right, so for the lower half, um, now if we did have a single number as a median, like let's say we had another 10 in the middle here, you would not count that when you're calculating the lower quartile. All right, so we'll just look at the numbers that are below the median and then find the median of those and that's the number 10. So 10 is the lower quartile. I'm just going to call it a Q. And then the upper quartile is the median of the upper half, and that would be 12. Okay. Then the middle quartile, or the second quartile, is just the median of the data set. So you can call it the median, um, second quartile, middle quartile, all the same thing. Okay, if we wanted to represent these five numbers, we could use a box and whisker plot. So you draw a little line for the lowest value, which is one. And then um, let me put this on a, a scale so we get the right perspective here. And I think I'll go, maybe I'll go by fives. Uh, no, I'll, I'll do twos. Okay. I'll go just a little bit higher than the highest value. All right, so the lowest value is at one. Okay, and you can label that if you like. All right, uh, the lower quartile is at 10. All right, now I picked this one on purpose. I wanted you to see an example of, of some overlapping values. Okay, so this one, the lower quartile and the middle quartile or the the median are actually the same number, which is going to make the box plot look a little bit funny. So it's they're both at 10. Okay, and then the upper quartile is at 12. So that would be the second half of the box, and we're, we're not even really going to see that first half of the box. And then let's draw the whisker in from the lowest value to the lower quartile, and then we need to connect the upper quartile to the highest value, which is at 13. All right, so you can see the, let me label some of these things, 13, 12, 10. So in this case, the visual display is not the most effective because it's not really clear uh, which of these, the 10 and the 10 or the 12, which of those is the, um, the middle quartile. It could be either one. All right, so in this case, the best way to show the five number summary would be to just write out and label each of those five numbers. All right, let's do a standard deviation calculation for this set of data. 
Um, I think it's good to do this at least once um, by hand. Uh, you can do this automatically in Excel using the standard deviation formula, um, but I think it's helpful to see where this comes from and, and just get a feel for uh, how each of these data points um, plays into calculating the, the single number, the standard deviation. Okay, so the steps are written out in your reading, um, but the first thing we need to do is, is calculate the mean of the data set. So if you add these numbers up, all right, you'll get 56, and then there are six numbers, so the mean is about 9.3. All right, and you can see the mean um, doesn't necessarily describe the data very well because we do have the outlier. So remember that when you have an outlier, the median is a better descriptor of the data set, all right, because this mean is lower than all but one of the, the data points. Okay, then we need to find the deviation from the mean for each of these data values. All right, so we want to take the data value and subtract the mean. So we want to do 1 minus 9.3, 10 minus 9.3, do that for all the 10s, and then for 12 and 13. So anytime the deviation is a negative number, that's indicating that the data point is lower than the mean. And if the deviation is positive, that means the data point is uh, higher than the mean. Okay, step two, we want to find all of the squares of those deviations. So this is effectively getting rid of any, of any negatives, and we're looking at uh, the, the size of the deviation, not necessarily whether or not it's uh, above the mean value. All right, and then we'll in the end, we'll square root everything to undo the fact that we squared everything, um, so it will get back to the, the correct size. Um, step three, we need to add all of those squares. All right, so summing up all of those, you get 91.34. And then step four, we want to divide that by the total number of data values minus one. Okay, so I have six numbers here, so I'm going to divide that by five, and that gives 18.268. And then last step, step five, you take the square root of that number, and that equals uh, four point, about 4.27. Okay, so if you look closely at what we did, um, Essentially, uh, the mean is averaging the data values, while the standard deviation is averaging how far off from the mean each data value is. Right? So if we're looking at these deviations, this standard deviation is supposed to describe an average of, of those deviations. All right? So of course, we could have averaged those just by adding them up and dividing by 6. Uh, but because we had a negative in there, that would have that would have impacted and changed um, the average, right? So this process of squaring and then square rooting was just to, to get rid of the negative in our calculations. Okay, and then so you can take a look at, at the standard deviation and judge if that's a good descriptor of um, the deviations. So certainly we have, um, you know, all of these are are lower deviations, okay, they're closer to the mean than 4.27, but then we have one that's really deviated, so we have to account for that in, in the standard deviation number. And again, this is just one choice of how to describe the variation of the data, so you, you know you can draw your own conclusions at this point as to whether or not it's a, a good descriptor of the data. Um, but in general, if we try to interpret what the standard deviation means, uh, the bigger the standard deviation, the more spread out your data is. Okay? And the smaller the standard deviation, the less spread out it is, the closer to the mean it is. And this is true even if we do have an outlier. So uh, I've drawn these as symmetric distributions. Okay? But even if I, let me stretch this out. Okay? So both of these data sets, the way I've drawn them, would have about the same range. Right, so we maybe wouldn't be able to, to tell how close to the mean the data is, uh, but the standard deviation number is going to be lower for the second one, and it's going to show me that 
most of the data is, is close to the mean, right? whereas uh, in this top one, okay, most of the data is a little bit more spread out around the mean. Okay, and, and the second one, I guess the mean would be pulled a little bit more towards the uh, where the skew is, okay, but still most of the data is, a, is around that mean. Now sometimes we also use the plural, we talk about standard deviation su, right, and we really mean um, if we look at any d particular data point, right, uh, so let's, let's go back to our example here. Okay, so we've got a data set, these six numbers, mean of 9.3 and standard deviation SD of 4.27, all right? So we would say that the number one, all right, well, how far away from the mean is that? Okay, well, it's, it's, uh, it's 8.3, right? So we could say it's close to two standard deviations away, right? Meaning, um, it's like two, about two chunks of 4.27 away from the mean. Um, whereas these other numbers, uh, for example, 10, that's only 1.3 away from the mean, or I'm sorry, 0.7, going the other direction, uh, 0.7 away from the mean. So that's much less than one standard deviation away, okay? meaning it's, it's much closer to the mean. And something like 13, we would say that that's close to one standard deviation away from the mean. Now because the process for calculating standard deviation um, t is time consuming if you do it by hand and it it's fast if you do it with Excel but you might not always have uh, fast access to Excel uh, so we have something called the range rule of thumb which can help us find um, the standard deviation based on the range and if we know the standard deviation and the mean we can work backwards and find the range. Okay, now this works really well for symmetric distributions, but it doesn't work really well when you have an outlier. All right, so that's something good to be aware of. Um, so for example, here's, uh, here's the data set that we've been working with, and this one does have an outlier, so we should not expect the range rule of thumb um, to land us close to the standard deviation. All right, so for example, um, the range is uh, of this data is 12, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. All right, so the range rule of thumb um, would approximate the standard deviation for this data as 3, but in reality it was 4.27. Okay, so it's off quite a bit. Um, we would be a lot closer to the standard deviation if we didn't have this 1 in there. Now let's talk about using the, uh, the standard deviation and the mean to find the lowest and highest values, all right? So basically, you've got your, your lowest value and your highest, and then the distance between those is the range, all right? So the, the range rule of thumb is stating that if we take that range and cut it into four pieces, Okay, we get the standard deviation. So however, you know, whatever size this distance is, that's supposed to be the, the standard deviation. All right, so for, uh, for symmetric distributions, we'd expect the mean to be close to, close to the middle. If we're perfectly symmetric, um, we'll have mean and median be the same, all right? But we can kind of think of the mean as in the middle for now for, for symmetric distributions. Um, so then, to calculate the lowest value, right, you take the mean and subtract two standard deviations, or two times that value, whatever it is. Okay, so think of starting at the mean, and then to subtract two standard deviations means to move to the left, two standard deviations, whatever that amount is, and you can see that that lands you at the lowest value. And then similarly, if we start at the mean and add two standard deviations, that gets us pretty close to the highest value. All right, and again, keep in mind these are all approximations. The mean's not exactly in the middle. The standard deviation is not exactly a quarter of the range, but these are pretty close. So let's do one example. Let's estimate a range based on the mean and the standard deviation. All right, so studies of the gas mileage of a Prius under various driving conditions show that it gets a mean of 45 miles per gallon. All right, that's the mean with a standard deviation of four miles per gallon. 
They estimate the minimum and maximum gas mileage you can expect under ordinary driving conditions. All right, so if we take the mean and we subtract two of those standard deviations, right, subtract eight, we get 37. So that's kind of like moving backwards two times to 37. And then if we add two times the standard deviation, then we get 53. All right, and that's a good estimate for the highest value. And then from there, you can um, subtract to find the range or just state that the range is, is approximately from 37 to 53. All right, so those are, those are some different ways to describe the variation of data. Uh, in the next section of your reading, we'll move into inferential statistics, and we'll look at um, what conclusions we can draw about an entire population based on the sample data that we have.